tournament tactician time, baby. So we didn't get a balance patch and things still changed a decent amount within the meta. If you want to check out a little bit more in detail, I highly recommend checking out the tournament series that I write for Giant Slayer, which basically replaced War Room, right? Where I feel like um, I, the way that I'm doing Tournament Tactician is I'm, I'm kind of assuming that like you read the articles that I write. So follow me on Twitter at Caster Boulevard if you want to keep up with those, because I did replace my video form. Hey, here's what happened over the weekend with those articles with Giant Slayer. So if you're not reading those, you're missing out because we finally got a tournament win with eggs. You know, Shadox did pick up the Dreamhack Clash win with that, so the deck's a little bit more on the map than it was previously. I think a couple players are bringing it to the uh, America's Fight Night that is currently going on while I'm recording this video and getting it up. But the main shift has been into anti-Sivir lineups, where Nab is coming up in a big way, Shen J4 is coming up in a big way, and the meta is starting to sort of revolve around these powerhouses rather than the Sivir powerhouse, although I still think, like, Nab, Sivir, Shen Demacia was, like, one of the more popular lineups at the previous weekend, sort of, like, late-stage events. Like, so DreamHack took place Sunday night, you know, as late as we could have possibly had a tournament. And Jason Florent got second with, I believe, Sivir, Akshan, Nab, and Shen Demacia. And then Shadox won with Eggs, Shen Demacia, and Nab, which was sort of how he let the Eggs get through, was you take these other decks that are supposed to beat Sivir, you say, hey, if you are playing Sivir, you have to ban one of these, and then take your chances against the combo, and then the combo just kind of worked out for Shadox in that manner. So, you know, Eggs is really starting to pop up in, like, these invitational, these small-type formats. We haven't seen it make a splash in an open tournament yet. The Online League series is happening this weekend. I will have a link to that in the description below if you want to sign up for it. Me and Jadoza, of course, will be casting that like we always do. And the seasonal is getting pretty close. But that's really the major update is we started to go towards this, like, mid-range Frostbite style of gameplay where Sejuani just beats a lot of the things that's in the meta. And Nab is really the Sejuani deck that's going to turbo out the best. Now, there are a couple of, like, Swain Sejuani decks that I've seen pop up, but Nab is definitely the more prominent one that you're going to be seeing a lot more over the course of the weekend, and it looks a lot like it used to. Frostbite midrange, I think, is going to also come up in a big way as we continue to get just, like, Frostbite as the anti-meta tool against these midrange decks like the Sivir, like the Shen Demacia, and Lee Sin even is sort of victimized by this, where it, it wants to come back into the meta, but there's all this Frostbite running around, and Nab is usually, like, aggressive enough that it can get through this, although... You know, it, it doesn't really have a lot of removal. The Eye of the Dragons can stalwart it a little bit. So, like, Lee Sin's st in a better position than it was previously, I think. And Lee Sin was always in a pretty good spot. It didn't do well against Sivir, but it usually did pretty well against the other things. So, as Sivir starts to get pushed out a little bit more, hey, maybe Lee Sin makes a bit of a comeback. But Azir Aurelia doesn't lose to Nab like Sivir does, and we're kind of right back where we started. So, I, I'm not really expecting anything to happen to the play rate of Lee Sin. I think that Frostbite midrange kind of has overtaken Draven Ezreal as, like, the sort of anti-meta deck, quote-unquote, that is going to do well into the format that we currently have available to us. Discard aggro is still just kind of a house of a deck, beats just about everything that you want to be beating right now, so I think discard is going to continue to maintain its high presence. Not too much changed outside of that. Uh, Spooky Viego has been picking up a decent presence. Uh, it's a deck that I've been playing a lot on ladder. People are still kind of refining the list. Deathmark, is it a bait? Is it not a bait? It's always been a bait in the past, so what's so different now? And while things are drastically different, you know, it is possible that the Dark Water Scourge and Deathmark combo is going to get dropped from this deck for something else. I know players have started to put Thresh into it. Um, there's, there's a lot of adaptation still going on in the Spooky Viego. So, like, this is a deck that is very much on my radar. It's still being figured out. I think it'll be ready in time for the seasonal, but I think this is sort of the weekend where we're going to see a decent amount of experimentation with it. But matchups are all over the place right now, and it's really coming to the forefront of the Runeterra competitive landscape where players are taking matchups on an individual basis. Where, let's talk about like Nab versus Sivir, Akshan, where I think the broad stroke stats are that Nab is only like a, a 35 or 40% win rate into Sivir Akshan, but any individual player that I have talked to from the Nab side has like a 60 to 70% win rate against Sivir Akshan. So it's really coming down to like, you, you can't always pay attention to like what the ladder stats are telling you. You do kind of just want to jam the matchup yourself multiple times and say, hey, you know, this is where... I'm beating it, maybe other players aren't doing this, and if you are having individual success in a matchup, regardless of what the broad stroke stats are saying, you should be playing that in tournaments over the next two weeks, and either figuring out what you're different, doing differently than these other players and saying, yeah, this is why I beat this matchup, or you're going to get your ass kicked. Like, if you are 
consistently beating Sivir, Akshan, as a NAB player, and then you go into tournament and you just lose to every Sivir player you play against, you should be learning why that deck is beating you and kind of adapting to that or deciding like, hey, okay, now I see what the top players are doing differently on Sivir that these other ladder players weren't doing, and that's why I was beating them with NAB and not the tournament players, things like that. You should definitely use these next two weeks as like extensive testing periods get a little bit crazy get a little bit kooky this is like the safest weekend to get crazy and really off meta and try out your wild boy shit because next weekend you really want to start locking in that lineup because the seasonal is only in two weeks right we are it is upon us so with the online league series this weekend um i don't know if there's going to be a big open tournament next weekend so this is where you want to come in and get like that crazy testing uh if i were playing this weekend i would definitely have spooky viego in my lineup i would definitely have nab in my lineup i might even play Lee Sin as my last deck that's not a very centralized or well thought out lineup but those are the three decks that kind of interest me the most right now which kind of is what it is uh anivia has popped up as the premier shadow isle failure deck you know i was talking about i think it's going to be feel the rush turns out it's anivia I'm not sure why. Look, I'm, I'm a level with you. I am doing my best as an analyst, but there are so many decks that, like, knowing every individual deck's matchups or why it's popping up in the meta, if I took, you know, two hours to think about it, maybe I would get it, and I, I will for the seasonal report, but um, for now I'm just kind of scattered all over the place on, like, why Anivia is popping up instead of Field of Rush. My main, like, the thing that sticks out to me the most is lack of deny. Um, Concussive Palm is not as effective against Anivia as it is something like Trundle or Trindamir. That's probably it. But I really didn't expect Frelia or Shadow Isle to be doing well in general, which is why I'm surprised by Anivia. I can understand why he's doing better than Field of Rush. I don't fully understand why Shadow Isle or is doing so well. But, you know, with that said, we are actually kind of getting into a, a realm of possibility to, like, run three control decks where you can run Anivia and you can run Spooky Viego and then find a third one. But that's kind of where we are right now. Frostbite is in a good spot because we are in such like a mid-range dominated meta and all these mid-range decks are kind of throwing themselves at each other figuring out which one's the best one what wins the mirrors and all those kinds of things and then aggro decks uh or rather more aggressive decks like azira really are kind of slipping under the under the cracks and discard aggro is, of course still doing very well kind of like the spot check for aggro decks and tf swain has been performing but not up to snuff and there is still like that split on the tf gangplank versus tf swain I believe at Europe's Fight Night, TF Gangplank either got second or first. I think it was first. Win by coin flip playing Spooky Karma and TF Gangplank if memory serves. So, um, still not totally sure where the Gangplank Swain differential comes in on like what players want to be playing um, in, in a more open format, like the three deck format specifically, uh, because Fight Night is only two decks, that's why I usually don't draw results from it, I think that you're better off running Nab as your Gangplank deck, because I don't think players are really targeting Nab yet, I'm not sure what you could do to target Nab that isn't necessarily, like, to target Nab specific, because if we talk about targeting Nab specifically, what we really mean is like, hey, how do I beat midrange and do it with a win condition through Sejuani, so like, that's kind of where we're at, and of course, Nab's prominence actually just like continues to push Overwhelm out of the meta, because like, Sivir shouldn't be going in your Overwhelm, Sejuani shouldn't be going in your Overwhelm, and Mono, Renekton, and Overwhelm, maybe that's a thing, you know, we'll see. But that's kind of where we're at, like, if you just want to get down to the nitty gritty of it, like, Sivir's your focal point, you, you now have lineups that consistently beat the Sivir with the Nab and the Shen Demacia, although for the most part, Sivir has still been the third deck in those lineups, or at least some sort of Ionia Shurima has been the third deck in those lineups. So, really, it's still just coming down to, like, are you banning Ionia Shurima, or are you leaving it open? And it's not like previous Tier 0 metas, where, like, you, TF Fizz, for example, you couldn't leave TF Fizz open, unless you were playing Triple Smork, in which case you're losing to every other, you know, lineup in the format. Uh, we're not at that point. You can beat a zero, uh, or rather, Ionia Shurima. You might not be able to beat every instance of Ionia Shurima. Like, if you bring Nab, Shen, J4, and Sivir, Akshan, I don't know that you're beating a zero Aurelia and Sivir, Akshan, and um, Eggs, and Akshan, Lee Sin. Like, there's just so many different ones within the same regional combination. But, like, broad stroke strategy, hey, I want to ban the Ionia Shurima deck. That's still something that you're going to do a lot. And that opens up your opportunities a lot more in the kind of lineup that you want to run. That's where you're going to see, like, your TF Swains and your Draven Ezreals, your Anivias even. But if you do want to beat this Frostbite mid-range style decks, including Frostbite mid-range, including Nav, including Shandamasia, are sort of where players are going towards to get that done. So, that's where we're at for this weekend. As I had mentioned, the Online League Series will be running another open tournament, unfortunately, for the Americas only, as we got rid of Cross Shard, but we have all the shiny new lab stuff. Yay! Um, 
Me and Jay Doza will be casting that on his Twitch channel, Jay Doza GG or Jay Doza underscore GG. Follow me on Twitter at Caster Boulevard, and you will know when and where it's going live, so you don't have to worry about me forgetting my co-caster's Twitch handle at the end of all of these videos. But thank you so much for watching. My name is Boulevard, and as always, good luck in your tournaments.